Hey everybody. So this is just a quick video off the cuff. Just something that it occurred to me would be a very important thing to point out right now while all of this insanity is unfolding with the pivot. We may live in a technologically advanced world, or at least that's what we've been told, right? But there are still certain parameters that are basic and inherent. And I think it's becoming very clear to at least some people how much of what we experience in this world through the media, through the news cycle, through social media is based on trust. Because if you're not there physically experiencing something with your own eyeballs, your own set of senses that is sending sense data from, from where you physically are into your brain to be interpreted, if you aren't actually there, then wherever you're getting information from, you have to have a modicum of trust in that source to believe that what you're seeing is actually reality unfolding. I've seen pictures being shared and uh, video clips being shared on Twitter that are literally straight out of films. And they're saying that that's what's going on right now. but it's literally a movie. <laughs> so, so all of this technology is not mediating reality in a way that people should just be believing every single thing that they're seeing all the time. It should be trust but verify, at least, if you're going to do anything. Although, I don't know, I'm such a cynic at this point. <laughs> but I just, I'm like, verify, that's it. Like, it's either verify or nothing. I don't, I, I don't trust but verify, I just verify if you can. And a lot of people are not in the position to verify a lot of things. And so it just keeps coming back to this idea of trust, of having confidence and being able to rely upon sources. And I feel like after everything that has just happened for the last several years, it's not a conspiracy to say that trust has been heavily eroded. It was already heavily eroded before what happened in the last two years, right? Now, I just think it's, it's kind of crazy that there are certain groups of people who I really do feel have been made to feel so much personal fear in their own lives and for their own well-being and those they love and care for is that they now are in a place where it's just like they're, they're open. They're just open and receiving everything that they are told without any critical thinking, stopping. It's, it's, you know how they say that when you're a child up until the age of say six or seven, before concrete reasoning skills kick in, that you are just basically a sponge that is taking in your reality in a very unfiltered way. And so everything is just going in there. I feel like that some people have reverted back now to that phase. And so everything that they are being told, there's not trust, but verify. The verify part is gone. It's just believe and that's it. Without any questions being asked whatsoever. And that is a completely dangerous place for society to be in. Because it's coming up meeting with all of this technology that's getting more and more and more sophisticated all the time. And I spoke about this years ago. I did a video and actually it had to do with a Stanford experiment that was being done. And Stanford tried to censor our video. It went viral and then Stanford tried to censor it and got kind of got it shut down for two weeks. And we had to appeal. And when it finally came back, it never regained the... The, the views that it was getting before they did that. But this is kind of a follow-up to where that technology has gone. And what they know now 
years later with some of this. So this is a picture of a child that doesn't exist. This was created by a generative adversarial network, by an AI. This child is not real. He may look real. That may look like a real kid to you. But that is a composite image that an AI made out of lots of other images. And it's getting more and more sophisticated all of the time. And in fact, it's getting so sophisticated now that studies are showing, and this one just came out, it was just published a couple of days ago, that humans now find AI-generated faces more trustworthy than the real thing. So we are at that point now where people are unable to distinguish now between sophisticated machine-generated humans, pictures of people, and actual pictures of actual living, breathing people. The veil between those two worlds is so thin as to basically be non-existent at this point. And so this was a study published in the Proceedings of the National Academy of Sciences, and the results suggest that real humans can easily fall for the machine-generated faces and even interpret them as more trustworthy than gen genuine pictures of actual human beings. It says, we found that not only are synthetic faces highly realistic, they are deemed more trustworthy than real faces, says study co-author Hanny Fareed, a professor at the University of California, Berkeley. The result raises concerns that these faces could be highly effective when used for nefarious purposes. Or at all. I mean, just... They could show you 20 faces of people and say, this is these people and this is what happened to them. Here's a whole backstory about them and why you should care and blah, 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 blah. And literally none of them could be real. That's the level. It's beyond deep fakes. It's like whole realities can now be created by artificial intelligence and nobody would know if they don't question anything. And even if you do question it, it's going to become impossible to tell. And so they compiled 400 real faces of actual people and 400 synthetic versions of people. And they asked 315 people to distinguish using 128 images. And they gave them as long as they needed to do that. And then there was another group of 219 participants who actually received training and feedback on how to spot fakes to try to help them a little bit, right? And then they had a group of 223 participants that rated a selection of 128 images for their trustworthiness of whether or not that image was real. The first group did not do better than a coin toss at telling real faces from fake ones with an average accuracy of 48.2%. The second group, the one that was trained to spot fakes, failed to show a dramatic improvement, receiving only about 59%. And that's even with feedback about their choices to try to help them. And the group that was rating trustworthiness gave the synthetic faces a slightly higher average rating of 4.82 compared to 4.48 for real, actual, living human beings. And it says the researchers weren't expecting these results and that they initially thought the synthetic faces would be less trustworthy than the real ones, but that did not happen. It did say that they were able to overwhelmingly identify certain fakes as being fake. But <laughs> overall, it was basically a coin toss, which means it's getting to a point of impossible to tell. Have you ever had a dream, Neo, that you were so sure was real? What if you were unable to wake from that dream? How would you know the difference between the dream world and the real world? And this is the study. It was done through the Department of Psychology at Lancaster University in the UK and the Department of Electrical Engineering and Computer Sciences at University of California, Berkeley. There's just a couple comments down here that I wanted to read to you in the discussion. 
It says synthetically generated faces are not just highly photorealistic, they are nearly indistinguishable from real faces and are judged more trustworthy. And they thought that was the most interesting part, that synthetically generated faces were deemed more trustworthy. Synthetically generated faces have emerged on the other side of the uncanny valley. This should be considered a success for the fields of computer graphics and vision. But at the same time, easy access to high-quality fake imagery has led and will continue to lead to various problems, including more convincing online fake profiles, and as synthetic audio and video generation continues to improve, problems of non-consensual intimate imagery, fraud, and disinformation campaigns with serious implications for individual societies and democracies. We therefore encourage those developing these technologies to consider whether the associated risks are greater than their benefits. They always say stuff like that, don't they? I bring this up all the time and I feel like a freaking broken record saying it, but how many times have we heard them warn, like, are the benefits outweighing the risks here? Like, it doesn't ever stop a damn thing, does it? Not ever. If you extrapolate into the future and say, well, how good, let's say, will video games be in a hundred or 200 or 1,000 years from now. If you extrapolate that out into the future with any rate of progress at all, if you assume any improvement at all, if you assume any rate of improvement at all, any rate of improvement at all, like even 0.1% or something like that, any improvement, 1%, 0.1%, then the games will become indistinguishable from reality. Then eventually those games will be indistinguishable from reality. Beyond a certain resolution, indistinguishable from reality. Just in, they'll be indistinguishable. It'll be so realistic, you will not be able to tell the difference between that game and the reality as we know it. Then games will be indistinguishable from reality. So essentially we live in a world now, technologically speaking, where video of a person talking can be edited in real time to make it seem like that person is saying anything. Recordings of someone's voice can be used to generate a soundboard of their voice saying anything and it sounds like they actually said it when they didn't. Since the 90s at Los Alamos, they could take a 10 minute digital clip of anyone's voice and in near real time, the patterns could be cloned to create a convincing, total and complete soundboard of that person. So it's a fake that can make a person sound like a person says anything they want. And if you heard that, you would think it was really that person really saying that. Generative adversarial networks are now creating human beings out of thin air using bits of images to create and compile people that do not exist. And on top of all of that, it has gotten so sophisticated that people in scientific studies now cannot tell the difference between a synthetic computer-generated human and a picture of a human being that actually physically exists. That is the level that we are now at. I remember when I was a kid, people used to say, seeing is believing. Do you guys, am I dating myself now to talk about that? I remember that. I remember that being a phrase that people would generally just say sometimes. Not only do I not think it was ever true then, <laughs> it's definitely not true now. And I think what we're going to start seeing, and this is just my perspective, there are some people who are tapping into their God-given gut instincts and they're trusting that. And there are others who are having that innate sense that we all have overridden by the lower emotions, I guess. Anger, fear, the kind of thing that just gets a knee-jerk reaction without any critical thought happening between the stimulus and the response. And the whole show is designed to keep people hooked in so they never pull back enough to recognize the cycle of what is happening. What is the matrix? Control. The matrix is a computer-generated dream world. 
built to keep us under control in order to change a human being into this. I mean, like I said in my last video, every time I leave the house pretty much without fail, somebody's driving off the road. They're just like meandering on the road and then now there they go again. They're on the freaking median. They don't even know what they're doing. They're just in and off the road, back and forth, back and forth. This is happening all the time now. I see this every time we leave the house and go on this highway. It's like, there he goes. See it? It's just over the line. Drive right off the damn road. People need to take back their internal power over these processes. And I just think that point needs to be made, especially now when it feels like, I don't know, some people seem to be questioning things more than ever. I mean, it even came out that the characters in Animal Crossing are becoming self-aware now and they're questioning their reality on the little island there, okay? But then you have whole groups of other people and I don't know if it's the fear, like I said. I don't know if that's why. It just seems like they have completely foreclosed on the idea of questioning anything they're told about literally anything. And you would think, or at least I do, now is the time to be asking more questions than maybe literally ever. <laughs> like, ever. <laughs> and, uh, and so, I don't know. I just... I just felt the need to point that out. I feel like I am overdue for that treehouse in the woods somewhere. <laughs> Anyways... I love you guys. I'll talk to you later.